So I'm not in one dimension anymore. I am now in two dimensions. So now how many number lines do I need? Two. How do I show that? So my number line gets extended. You see how the magic happens? What's the point of intersection? What do you think both number signs should do at that point? Zero, right? The same point. I will have the same divisions that go this way and I will have the same minus signs that go that way. I will have plus that goes up and minuses that go down, right? So I have just superimposed two number lines and called it 2D space. Will these both go until infinite? Both directions? But they always start at zero. And there's a name for that zero. We call it origin, okay? So that means I now have, I can call these fancier. I can call this X and I can call this Y. Basically two number lines, now in X and in Y. Same rules apply. So if I was to draw a person, Standing here. Okay, let, let me go back to this one. Let me do a, a person standing here. Okay, so how do I tell somebody that this person is where on this number line? Yes? Use the spots that she's standing at and the numbers that correlate to this. Which, one, which would be? Uh, that would be like coordinates. Yes, so this would be just? This person is at four, yes? Because they're literally standing at four. What if I moved this person? What if I moved this person to go here? Where is this person now? At 2.5, about? Okay, what if I made this person go here? Negative three, right? So this person can move on the number line. Now in my 2D space, where is this person now located? Imagine this point. How do I tell somebody where this person is? I now need two coordinates to define where this person is, right? How do I show that? One, two, three along the X and one, two along the Y. That's the, that's the magic of doing physics. Anybody that sees three and two written like this knows because they understand the language that this person is at X equals three and Y equals two. You do not have to explain it to them. Got it? And that's like, you know, guys, you guys send texts. Do you write whole sentences? What do you write? Okay, think of something that you've written the most of in the last five days. Wait, what? Okay, good. Or has anybody done the LOL things or is that even a thing anymore? Right? Okay is a good one. LOL is a good one. Why do you not have to explain to your friend what that means, what the text that you send? Wait, sorry, louder. They already know what it is. This is text for physicists. You don't even have to speak the same language and you will know when three, two is written this way, 
it means coordinate system. It means three is X and two is Y. We just know, right? So you're learning a new language and how to communicate with people, right? And they could be from um, another part of the world. Like I'm from Pakistan. So I'm like across the world, right? Halfway across the world. I know what this means, even if I speak not a single word of English. Now, what if we move this person, uh, sorry, another person to here? Oh, he's, he's in between the two points. What will this person's coordinates be? Remember, we have to start with what first? X. So this person's coordinates are? And negative three. And each of these are called quadrants. So this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. Why? Because it's just easier. Somebody came up with this scheme and we all understand it. We all know how it works and it's around the world. The same thing when we do angles. Right? So we start when we do angles. Everybody's seen this before, right? Why do we always start at X? Somebody came up with this convention and we all said, okay. That's honestly what happened. But now everybody understands, it, right? Because it's a language that we have developed. Okay, the last one. What if now, Instead of just me being allowed to walk in just this space, what if I have a ball and I throw it up and I catch it? How many dimensions of space do I have now? Three. And here's another magic I'm going to teach you. Everybody hold up your right hand. And you're going to hold this like this. So one, two, three. Do you see how my fingers are? Actually, okay, let's do that first. So these three fingers, make them go together. This is one finger and this is one finger. You have just made a three-dimensional coordinate system. And all it is is three number lines that are intersecting each other with a zero in the middle, okay? And someone at some point said, we are all going to be living in the right-handed coordinate system. So we are going to use this system for the rest of the class. And I'll explain to you how that works later. But right now, remember, we are in a right-handed coordinate system. But remember this. So we are living in a right-handed coordinate system. And what does our three-dimensional coordinate system look like? It looks like this, this, and then something funny happens. Think of the third arrow as pointing towards you. So this arrow, think that this is aiming directly towards you. Okay? And the way we show it sometimes is by dropping a dot like that. Think of an arrow, you know, the arrow, bow and arrow thing. So the arrow pointing towards you will show you a dot. But when the arrow is going away from you, you see a cross at the back. So this side will be a cross at the back. Okay. So think of this as a coordinate system that has an X and a Y and a thingy pointing towards you. Now, if this person the same person that we've been talking about, is somewhere here. How many coordinates do you think she's going to need to define where she is? Hold up your hands. Three, right? X, Y, Z. So this is going to be X. This is going to be Y. And this is going to be Z. And what is this point in the middle? Zero or origin. origin, very good. There we go. 
And this person's coordinates will be, I don't know, four, two, five. So what does the four correspond to? X, what does the two correspond to? And what does the five correspond to? That's how the coordinate systems work. Are we good? Okay, wonderful.